Yeah, I'm Daniel Halbach. Um, and while we have a lot of talks here at the booth and also at KubeCon that are about, um, you know, how to implement GitOps at, at your place and, and how to, and what happened in Flux development, I wanted to talk a bit about Flux as a community and as a, as a project. So as I said, I'm, I'm Daniel. Um, I work at WeaveWorks as a community manager. So you better not talk to me too much about uh, Go code, but everything that is related to open source, community, governance, documentations. That's all stuff I, I care about. And um, also care about getting more people involved in Flux, but also other cloud native projects. Um, I live in Berlin, Germany, and um, I'll also be DJing at um, GitOps Days and also our event next week. I'll talk a little bit about that later. So um, if you have general questions about what Flux is, um, please say so in the, in the, um, in the chat and then we'll, we'll get to those questions. But for now, I'll just assume that everybody is on the same page about this. So I guess every way you look at Flux, if it's just the last half year or the last year, there's so much been happening. And this has been a lot because um, Flux is, is at, a, at a, a, a crossroads moment. So we've been Flux. Um, who's, it? who's speaking? Was it a question? I it, I, no, I think it was Tomo joining from the booth. Oh, OK. You're good. OK. Yeah, welcome back, booth people. So Flux has been around for, I think, four years now. And um, while it was the first to implement uh, GitOps, it was also started in a time when um, it wasn't quite clear that Kubernetes was going to be the winner in terms of, of um, orchestration and, and deployments. So it came with quite a bit of history. And it was um, in April last year where we decided we're going to rewrite everything in Flux and, and base it on um, newer technology like controller runtime, uh, the Kubernetes project. And here you can already see like how all of our development shifted from Flux first version and Helm operator to a set of more um, targeted and focused controllers, which um, was for for the engineers a lot of work, but also for um, our community and our users a big ask. Basically, everybody need, needed to reorient themselves. So, as I said, for everyone involved, it was a very, um, very busy time. And aside from the development itself, um, it also meant we had to do a lot of a lot more communication. So if you look at the left hand side of the slide, this is all um, um, uh, uh, videos our community put together, basically resources where we walked people through um, new features of Flux, where the new Flux is going, how to migrate code walkthroughs. Basically everyone that would, every, basically um, all of these were made to help people migrate, get started, and, and to inspire people. And on top of that, we, we did like loads of, of blog posts, monthly um, communication to our users, but also people who integrated Flux into their GitOps offerings and into extensions, into products to keep everyone on the same page. And we also started talking more to, to um, other groups like the, the GitOps working group or um, the, the app delivery um, SIG. So communications was, was really 
key in, in moving us as a, as a project forward. And, and just to give you an idea of, of what happened in the, in the past six months, so basically since the last KubeCon, um, in terms of development and features, a lot happened in, in V2. So only last week we landed server side apply. So this basically takes advantage of, um, of the Kubernetes feature. Uh, server side apply. This is going to um, make Flux way more um, performant. Um, it will allow way more um, observability, and and uh, will bring other features for us in the in the future. So this was was a big step for the Flux project. And yeah, a while ago we we also marked the Flux APIs. A stable, so this is like the perfect time to to migrate if you if you haven't already, and also for integrators um, who, who basically use um, Flux APIs or or, or some of the uh, controllers. Now it's it's basically guaranteed that the APIs are are stable, so. Um, you can start building products and, and other tools on, on top of Flux, no problem. It's also available on, on OpenShift now, and um, yeah, loads more. So it's it's really worth diving into V2. And as you can, can see, like development is really um, fast paced. There's a lot, a lot happening. And this is all possible just because we have so many contributors. So if you look back at, at what, I, what I just explained, um, it, it, it wasn't quite easy to convince everyone, okay, we're going to rewrite everything and, um, you know, everyone get, get involved now. But basically all of the little avatars on, on the slide is basically one person who, who decided to, to jump in and, um, Every day, it's we we have more people we're we're adding to this, and we also added more maintainers. Um, so Flux was started inside Weaveworks. It was a Weaveworks project in the beginning, but it was donated to the CNCF, and to us, it was important to make it always more transparent, more open, get more people involved, and from the Maintainers team around Sandbox. We had like two people who didn't work at at WeaveWorks today. It's five, and we also have a couple of alumni. So um, the project is also getting more diverse and also getting more input from other companies. Um, so that also means at our public meetings, we have, um, you know. A, engineers from like big cloud vendors or, or from other companies who, who um, have their say in, and get involved. So it's a very diverse group that um, shapes the shapes um, flux development. And as I said, it's also interesting to see that we are seeing more and more like big PRs, like new features and, and um, from, from newcomers. So that means that it, it was a good bet for us to go with um, V2 and more targeted controllers because they are more easily understandable, easier to test and to understand the code. And um, But it's not just code. Uh, we also get a lot of contributions to docs, uh, people who look at issues, who write blog posts and do conference talks. And this is just very, Beautiful for us as a project to to see this this level of involvement and that um, yeah Flux is a is a real community these days. Um, yeah, and we're seeing more and more adoption. So if you go to the adopters page on on the Flux website, you'll see that we're getting more and more. 
people who who um, base their work on, on on flux for their GitOps needs. And um, next week's next week uh, Wednesday at the twentieth, we're going to have the a GitOps one-stop shop event. I'll talk a bit more about this later, but basically we are, we're going to have like um, big players there who basically um, 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 base their, their GitOps offering on Flux. So they're going to showcase uh, what they built and also why they chose Flux. So uh, we'll, we'll hope to see you there next next week. And one uh, use case I also want to highlight in terms of adoption. Um, if you check the, one of the latest CNCF blog posts, you'll see a case study we did with the um, US Department of Defense. And they built like a very, very big um, platform for around 100,000 developers. And this is all also working because of, of Flux and Helm. Um, of course, as a community, we are very proud to see this happen because it it um, yeah it, it it sort of illustrates that um, what we've been working on it it's it's it gets validated, so we're very happy. But as you can imagine, like with a lot of adoption. Um, that also brings brings some challenges for for a project. So, since we entered the CNCF sandbox, the number of Slack participants went up by the factor of six. Um, so that makes it a bit harder for us to um, basically stay on top of all the conversations and to to help everyone. But we took a number of, of steps to to um, make this easier and and to basically still be there for 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 our community. So one thing we did was that we added more end to end tests. That means that um, more issues will be caught during the development process already. Um, we also had Kingdon. Um, he'll he'll probably see him. Um, here as well, um, he started running the the bug scrubs. So they are basically a, an initiative where we get um, community people involved, and and it's a it's a great opportunity to learn how um, basically how the how the flux project is is structured, how to interact with issues, how to debug things, mm -hmm. and They've been quite successful. Um, I think I would need to check the numbers again, but um, the way this works is that Kingdom often prepared like a, a spreadsheet. So we had a, a list of issues and I think almost every single time they went down to, to, to zero afterwards. So um, this is a, is a nice success and also a nice way to to get involved and to also learn more about the project if you have like an hour to spare every now and then. And we are very lucky because we managed to attract a lot of people on on Slack and and elsewhere um, who started answering questions. So it's we went basically from just the, the maintainers in the very beginning, so a very small group, to um, a big com community where everybody is is sort of helping out. And if you want to join there, if you're a, a Slack person, this is this is great. And I think we could also do more there, like for example, turn some of these um, answers maybe into FAQ entries or something like that. So. Uh, I think there's for a flux support team. There's also more we could do in the in the future. Yeah, I think that's. Oh yeah, a little wanted to give props to the uh, GitOps working group. I feel this has also helped a lot because there in the GitOps working group. Um, 
people got together who looked at user stories and patterns and solutions and tried to um, condense these into into GitOps principles and also make them very understandable. So this is also yeah very welcome from from our end and also props to Scott who is a not just a helm and a flux maintainer but also um, working with a with a GitOps working group. So yeah, um, I think all of the things I mentioned up until now were um, very plain to see because we talked about them in our um, in our blog posts and elsewhere. So you could read about the development that happened. But these things <laughs> didn't exactly happen behind the scenes, but probably weren't as vocal about them. So one thing that was in, important to me was that we have a governance um, established. As I said, the project started at, at Weaveworks and it was a couple of, in the beginning just Michael, but later on a couple of engineers who got together in, in company meetings and then basically just developed the project. But we wanted the project to be more open. That's why we started public meetings. That's how why we figured out like if how we can make somebody maintainer basically agree on on principles and criteria and a, a bunch of other projects like uh, um, processes like how um, people can get access to to things and and lots more. And I'm, I'm really glad we, we did this. We reviewed this recently. So the governance processes have been in place for more than a year now. And um, I'm, yeah, I'm quite happy that we're such an open project. If you, have any, if you ever want to talk about governance or community processes, just reach out. It's a project, it's a part of the project that is uh, <laughs> dear to my heart. Um, Another thing that wasn't also, also wasn't secret, we even had the security audit folks in one of our public meetings a few weeks back. So um, we reached out to the CNCF and asked if we could do, if a security audit of Flux could be done for a couple of reasons. Like, first of all, we wanted to know like how the security posture of, of Flux is. Um, also, to, to guarantee to our users that what we're doing is uh, secure and and safe, but also that it's because it's part of the um, uh, criteria for, for CNCF graduation. So um, this was paid for by the CNCF. This was, uh, we're very grateful for this. And um, we're now in the, in the final stages of of review of the report. So the team has been working on this for a couple of weeks, reviewed the code um, and, and um, even implemented like a couple of um, feathers for, for, um, for the project. And we're now working through the, the findings of the, of the report and we'll um, publish it in the, in the next weeks. And in general, we're very happy with the results. And as I said, we'll announce it yeah, in a couple of weeks also, sometime after KubeCon. Uh, yeah. And in general, like I think with all the things we we I, I just mentioned in the in the presentation, I think we're on on a very good course for for graduation. Yeah. So lots is happening this week, but there's also more to come in the weeks afterwards. As I said, uh, the GitOps one-stop shop event is coming. It's brought to you by the GitOps Days people and um, AWS, E2IQ, Microsoft, VMware, and WeaveWorks have all built enterprise GitOps solutions on top of Flux. So if you're in the market for, um, for, for a solution, it's a, 
perfect opportunity to learn about what they've built and what they can do for you, but also to learn about why they've chosen Flux and, um, you know, Brennan Burns, Ehaw from, from CNCF, Michael Bridgen and loads of others are going to be there. Um, this is next week, Wednesday. And I'll, I'll um, if you make it there, I'll, I'll, I'll play some music for you as well. Yeah, and lots going to happen in, in development of, of Flux. Um, one piece of work that is happening right now is that we're refactoring the controllers. So we managed to extract a lot of very useful functionality into um, the PKG repository. So this means that um, we can reuse a lot of code and, and also test it, test it centrally, basically. So this is an effort uh, that is going to pay dividends. Uh, it's also going to make it easier to understand uh, the controller log logic and also reuse some of that uh, functionality in, in other projects. So um, if you're interested in, in helping with, with Flux development, this might be interesting to you. Um, and with this, we also made it more straightforward to write end-to-end -end tests. Um, I believe this would also be a good area to, to get involved with, especially if you have like, you know, uh, special um, cases you would like to see covered. Um, yeah, and we're on the road for GA, so general availability. If you check the, the roadmap, and you will see what's still missing and um, yeah, where you might want to get involved. Yeah, a note for Flagger users. Um, we added um, Flagger to the Flux project around a year ago or something. Um, am I still good to go or like, just notice Stacy is coming on, good. Um, so yeah, Flagger, it was a natural fit. Like we had like a lot of overlap in terms of, of the people who worked on it. Um, it it's going to be a great addition to Flux because we want progressive, progressive delivery uh, to be done within the Flux project as well. But one big part of work is going to be to move it on top of the new Flux controllers. So that's also going to happen if you're a progressive delivery or Flagger fan uh, talk to Stefan. I'm sure he's going to love having more hands on deck. And if any of the things, not just code contributions, but anything at all um, interested you, join us in our weekly dev meetings. It's a really good way to learn uh, what's happening and get to know people on the team. We look forward to seeing you there. Yeah.